to Around the NFL, presented by Barefoot Wines. I'm Dan Hansis. Got heroes here. Mr. Prime Beef himself, Greg Rosenthal. I think you were saying 100% all of us. I'm just focusing on you. Yeah, there's a lot to focus and on. And a nice little slab of uh, tofu, Mark Sessler. That's, I actually, um, when I was younger and had my first newspaper job, it was a copy editing job. Uh-huh. And I'd have to drive home at 2 in the morning because, you know, it's you do that late for a newspaper. And would drive past um, on my bike a tofu factory, and it smelled like dead animals had fallen from the sky. So I don't like the reference. It's a toughie. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. You brought I, that up. Well, because usually. I hadn't thought about that in like 14 years. Anytime meat products comes up, you usually say something grotesque. So I said, let me steer away from the meat. And I thought of one of the silly things but that I'm you ma- eat. But I'm essentially I made to... of like that. Like I'm not made of tofu. So. Okay. Just to clarify. How is everybody? Because <laughs> it's week 10. Where does it go, Greggy? Where does it go? And I know I've been saying that now every week. But now we're in the double digits. That is pretty crazy. This is yeah. kind of the dog days, I would say, if there is such a thing. This is like that middle period. We're not quite to Thanksgiving. Teams are grinding it out. We're grinding it well, out. Well, I'm holding in my hand. You can't see it on camera here. But um, the injury report for the league, which is profoundly huge. It's, yeah, it's, uh, a, uh, it's, it's really extended and a Russian extensive. Novel. It's a Russian novel, as Mark is wont to Had say. Had to drop the type font down a size so that it could fit on a page this week. Did you guys use spell check this time? I mean, last oh. time we took a look at that. Oh, okay. it's, it's just me typing it up. Okay. Ouch. Doing his best to really? make the show. Well, yeah, Greg like and I got on our radar. Did it, show did it not, Greg? Fast Couldn't you just time. print out the injury report? Yeah, but then it wouldn't be like organized by game. It would just be like team by team, and then it would be very un- it, it would It's be organized by game. But, we, hey. We well, clearly appreciate your work. Out, um, Later in the day on NFL.com are organized, but by the, when we're taping this show, I have to go find all this information and type it up. So. Well, it's all about Justin at this point on okay. the show. All right. Hey, I love you, Justin. I love football. Thanks. We're going to get into it. We have a full slate of action. Not full slate. We got the Ravens, Pats, Bengals, and Jets on by, but a lot to get to. We have another overseas game. Um, so, you know what? Why don't we start with that game? Please. Why not? Let's get to it. Let's head to the Deutschland and Allianz Arena. Allianz? Allianz? Let's roll with it. All right. Where the Seahawks and Tampa Bay Buccaneers will square off. Kickoff here stateside is 930 Eastern in Munich, uh, Mark. That would be Uh, later, earlier for us. Right. 630. Correct. So... Here is a important game, um, you know, obviously for both teams. The Seahawks looking to keep this momentum rolling forward on a four-game win streak. And uh, Greg, for the Bucks, they got a desperately needed comeback win over the Rams. But with their bye right around the corner here, getting a win against Seattle, that would really, to me, put them on, in pretty good ground at 5-5 five and five in that division. Can they do it? Yeah, they can do it. I don't think there's any reason to think that the Bucks are better than the Seahawks. By the way, I thought, I always thought like the the Goody song was. I just assumed that was the Germany national anthem that they had adopted when East and West combined. I it, did too, and I never gave it even a second thought. I thought it was either like Hasselhoff or yeah. this. That's turn, the club national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> like after 9 p.m., this is the national anthem. Oh, they got two. I like. That. <laughs> So aggressive language. Yeah. You know Brady's out at the clubs just like getting after it this week, dancing to this song. He is single. Um, all right, let's get into it, Brady. <laughs> he uh, played better, I think, against the Rams for the most part. His receivers let him down. Brady hasn't really been the problem, but the way they played at the end of that game on hyperspeed did make me think, like, can you do that more? I know that's the basic bro uh, comment to whenever teams play hurry up and then it works better. But I really do think it would help their team. They have personnel that they can just leave on the field uh, with Lenny Fournette in the two-minute drill and veteran receivers. And Tom Brady kind of changed football in 2010, 2011 playing at hyperspeed. It takes advantage of all the things he can do well and you're going up against a very young Seattle defense. Just mix it in playing at a better better tempo because when they take their time What happens is Tom Brady looks at the defense and he makes what's the quote-unquote right decision. And the right decision is let's run the ball on early downs 
uh, against these you know soft uh, boxes that the, the other teams are playing, and then they get one or two yards. And he's just like been programmed to make the mm-hmm. smart decision, but it's not smart. Don't stop running on early downs if you're the Bucks. I don't like this game for Tampa Bay at all, and I feel like we're, we're a one Tom Brady, you know, one and a half minute drill away from a week of major questions about a Bucks team that I find largely fraudulent at this point, and a lot of it has for me to do with their defense. I think Kenneth Walker, they're 4 0 since Kenneth Walker's come back, who looks like a dominant rookie of the year candidate and has. He's the favorite right now. I, yeah, Vegas, I mean, he has nine way. rushes of 20, or he has, he has a multiple rushes of 20 plus yards, five, and the Bucks have surrendered tw- nine of those, third most in the NFL. You can run on this Bucks team. It's, t- it's a characteristic from years past. I think Seattle, with Kenneth Walker and with the way Geno Smith is playing, this is a great situation. In the Bucks, we're seeing clips of the of the Seahawks at practice, and they just seem to me, under Pete Carroll, that he has reformed a team that is all about like playfulness, togetherness. They're dancing together at practice, everyone but Bruce Irvin, basically. That I'm was great. It. I Wait, love Bruce Irvin's that. not dancing. So they're like they had this thing. They had it in the past called Techno Thursday. And we, unfortunately, cannot play the music for you. But um, You can Sarah, guess what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, Sarah Walsh, who was out there, and if you're watching on, on, on the show, you can see right here, the, the entire Seahawks team is jumping up and down in early Pete Carroll glow. And then there's just Bruce Irvin standing about 20 yards away with his hands in his pocket thinking, like, I'm a little old for this. <laughs> he's not. He's like 28 or something. But I, yeah. He's 35. He was Bruce on, is 35 He now? was on wow. the lead. To me, his presence on this team it's been is good. one of the most amazing stories of the year. I mean, he he's uh, uh, tied to all, the, all those great teams. He was out of the league, wasn't he? And now he's back, oh, and he's right. actually yeah. making plays. That's crazy. Yeah, the, the Seahawks, yeah, Kenneth Walker's rise, the rise of the defense right around the same time. So it went from being, oh, this is kind of a interesting story. Geno's playing well, and they, they beat Russell Wilson. and But it still it had the vibe of a team that would be up and down but then the, the running game jumped up with Walker even after Penny went out and then the defense came up so I don't expect the Buc- Buccaneers based on what we've seen this season to be the team that then brings their defense down to earth I think this sets up well hmm. I agree yeah for Seattle unless Bucks they're favored yeah well, be- I think that's that residual where the Bucks were Brady juice but I I, I, do, I just think Seattle's been the better team now speaking of Geno um I one thing I had to say about Geno I like that he has this platform now because he's always been kind of an interesting guy. He's always been like a little different, and he, uh, you know, he'll say things like his now iconic um, "I didn't pick up" line. What was it? You know, I ain't right back. I ain't right back line. Um, they wrote me off, but they wrote me, I and I ain't right back. back. I That's nice. Need it both. Need there both you parts. <laughs> well, you got it. Well, I turned to you first. Yeah. You just looked at me. <laughs> just like dead, dead eyed, and then Justin. Although Justin, does he think he doesn't need to do the? Yeah. Well, he is, definitely needs to no, get it right gonna, if he's gonna come. He's in. Now I was just speaking trying to for jog, the fourth time on the show. I was just trying to jog minutes. your memory. I wasn't trying to say. Yeah. The full I wouldn't quote. want to cut him off. I thought you were gonna just um, get to. Anyway, it. Gino to me is entertaining. I know people don't believe it. I don't have an issue with Gino and the rise of Gino. It's it's a good NFL story and we're a story a season with a lot of bad quarterback of play. Doesn't matter what you believe or don't believe. I enjoy <laughs> Gino Smith and I enjoyed this quote from him when a reporter tried to lead him into some Russell Wilson slander. You know, playing right, any, any knee highs to kind of stay loose? Man, I feel like you're trying to do something there. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, you know, we were just, you know, resting and um, taking our time and, you know, just getting ourselves prepared for, for uh, you know, landing here. And, you know, it was good to come out here and do some knee highs on the field and, you know, just get ready for, uh, you know, practice tomorrow. I wonder if um, Russ, not to get to Russ, because he's not on this team anymore, but if he's starting to take some – mental notes like I'm just gonna like talk a little less well there is <laughs> there is a rust thread this week because Pete Carroll who I can you can just tell he loves Geno Smith and he loves what's happening he praised Geno Smith for the willingness to wear the quarterback wristband right with the plays on it saying you know uh with the last guy that wasn't an option that was swatted down and I kind of wish we had done that then Russell Wilson said I think we won a ton of games without the wristband but there is a little it's like this that little thread does not go away. everything seems like a subtweet Shane Waldron yeah. they just keep talking about the fact that Gino doesn't question what Shane Waldron wants to do and now they've made Sean, <laughs> Shane Waldron uh, look Great. I I don't feel comfortable uh, about this, though, uh, for the Seahawks. To me, it seems Hmm. very even. I think Bowles probably gets Antoine Winfield back this week. 
I think Vance Joseph did a good job making Gino hold the ball a little longer. If he's got any weakness here, it's that he's like Brady and that I think he's mostly winning before the snap and just seeing what the defense is doing. And he has a good idea even when they change their coverage post-snap. His numbers are awesome. But I think Todd Bowles can mix it up. And now that he has all those defensive backs, you can make Geno Smith hold on to the ball a lot. It's still a tough challenge, I think, going up against this Bucks defense. I know they've had some bad games, and you're right. Maybe the run defense is where the Seahawks win. But I don't just assume the Seahawks are going to roll over the Bucks. I don't assume it, but I think their strengths roll match up over. well with Tampa I didn't, Bay. I didn't say that either. Here, Peter Schrager is in Germany also, and he's, he's tweeted out that at night that the streets – are absolutely flush and filled with Seahawks fans. I think it's going to be a Ooh. massive, like, Seattle home crowd, even That's though it's, nice. in theory, a Tampa Bay home who game. Is, who is the um, most well-off fan base? I wonder, uh, is that Financially. A, is there a Forbes article about that? Because just, you know, hopping on the plane to Germany in the middle of November feels like I, I, would, I feel like they're pricey. from Europe. I would I would suggest, um, Oh well, yeah, that makes like, sense. L.A. or no, you know what, Dallas. Mm. You ever been to Dallas? Drew just got my ear, and he's like, Niners, Silicon Valley, which makes well, sense. Well, that makes sense. But are those, are those nerds watching sports? Dallas so. feels like a good well, cross-section. My feel is like these are European <laughs> fans that are there, mo- probably mostly German fans. There is a huge NFL contingent, and I feel like NFL has picked— A Seattle contingent. Well, yeah. the NFL's picked up a lot over the last decade plus, in part, you know, because of our the efforts of our friend NFL uh, UK Hank uh, for growing the sport. And who's been good— His name is Henry Hodgson. —in the last uh, decade? The Seahawks. It's the same reason why Tom Brady, I read, is the most popular jersey over there and probably has a lot of big fans, well, mostly from I guess his Patriots more my, games. I mean, Seattle's been fine in the last decade, but the Bucks won the Super Bowl two years ago. And they have Tom Brady. I would think the the streets would be flooded with the Bucks sure. fans in Germany. But I'm just saying, yeah. if if well, the if the Colts were in the upper quartile of the upper quartile the last twenty years, the Seahawks are that means s- top twenty seven, I believe. The man, <laughs> you're right. Yes, uh, is in the upper quartile of the upper quartile of the last decade. Right. I mean, I think they'd be number two or three. Ultimately, we don't know the answer to this. Well, I was also going to say we're basing all of this like this f- the supposed flood of Seattle fans based yeah. on. Uh, one Peter Strait. Yeah. Right. By the way, the he also didn't him. suggest that there weren't other people in the street. He just said that there, that was par- the partially. The oh, group he on the said street. it. It wasn't. You know what? We should move on. Okay. <laughs> Around the NFL is brought to you by Verizon, the network America relies on. It's time for Sunday Night Football pregame, presented by Barefoot One. This one will be up there in Silicon Valley, uh, where the Los Angeles Chargers will meet the San Francisco 49ers. All right, I like this one, Mark. Here we go. This is a game that Niners coming off their bye, so they're in good position physically, you would think. The Chargers not so much as, uh, as Justin Herbert continues to work with an offense that has been obviously – uh, marginalized by injuries. Uh, but what I liked about Herbert last week was his ability to ri- you know, bring the team up with him, even if you don't have your big dogs on the outside. Yeah, he did. And that was kind of a huge win for them to get to 5-3 and because they don't really vibe to me as a 5-3 and three team based on a number of factors. I mean, they are – the whole idea was Brandon Staley got his guys on defense. And what happened last year, it was his first season as head coach. Now he's got his scheme. He's got the right people to plug in. They're the 30th scoring defense in the league. They're 29th against the rush. Um, they're sort of a mess, yet they're four and one since October. They don't have their, the people to plug in. They're missing half of their They're missing it, but, but in, general, in general, the, off, like, the defense has not improved one iota. I mean, everyone's injured all across the league, to Dan's point with that sheet. But not as much as the Chargers. That, okay. Right? All right. I'm just so saying I, I that's, guess the thing that's is, like, part of it. Brandon Staley is made ex- – excuses are made for Brandon Staley no matter what happens with the Chargers. I get that. But he did have an interesting comment because I think we've all suspected that Justin Herbert, something's been off. He said that now he finally is essentially healthy from that injury and that he, they did have to hem in the game plan to some degree that now they're going to throw down field more. He's more mobile. And I just thought we saw a Justin Herbert – in the past month who was a little tentative, a little less risk-taking. And if you get a fully healthy version, when he's doing that, he's fearless. He's full of daring do, and he's willing to throw the ball anywhere to get it done. Daring do, ref. They need that. Because because without a full Justin Herbert, the Chargers have been boring to watch. And you have to overcome the fact that Keenan Allen's still in the abyss. Mike Williams, gone. And they're down their guys. Josh Palmer and DeAndre Carter both made plays 
uh, in that win over the Falcons. And I love one of my favorite absurd fun facts of the season. Austin Eckler scoreless in the first three games of the year. Ten touchdowns in five weeks. Uh, so they mm. are leaning a lot on him, obviously, both in the passing and the running game. The thing about Herbert last week that I took away was just that he played the Falcons. And he had to play exceptional to end up with 245 yards on 43 attempts and score 20 points. It's not easy. Against the Falcons with no pass yeah. rush coming at him. If I could lock this game up, I, I would in a heartbeat. I think this will be one-way traffic. It, it's not even allowed. It's out of the lock zone. That's how, just barely. that's how little respect uh, Vegas has for this team. I'm with you that – Staley's defense is disappointing because, you know, Mark, when, when they had their players, it's not like it looked much better. But it has to be recognized, Joey Bosa is the most important player on that defense. I know Derwin James is great, but there's such a drop-off between Joey Bosa and the rushers that they're sending out there opposite Khalil Mack, who's now a little banged up. They lost Austin Johnson, who was signed to be their run stopper for the season last week. We know J.C. Jackson's not coming back and wasn't playing well. Anyways, they're a team that can be pushed around on the ground, and now you got to play the 49ers, who haven't run the ball well this year. That's why they made that trade for Christian McCaffrey. It's the worst running game Kyle Shannon's ever had, yet I, after seeing McCaffrey for a couple weeks, I feel like that's about to end, and they're just going to steamroll him. It's, it feels like a mismatch on, on both sides of the ball. I hope I'm right, wrong, and I hope that Herbert kind of does what you say, Mark, and just lifts his team up and has like an old school Justin Herbert's going to do things right. type of game. That's, He's going to have to. I didn't see it last week. Even though that's what I mean. He had to play so well just for them to barely beat the I mean, Falcons. but if you want to, he, he was missing his wide receivers, which we talked about. But now you, if you're the Niners, you get Debo Samuel back. You have George Kittle, Christian McCaffrey, who obviously Kyle Shanahan's known for his, like, Christian McCaffrey's entire life almost. Trust him to do everything last week. Kyle Juszczyk, like, they, Well, you're forgetting can, a big one, too. Elijah Mitchell, I believe, is coming back this week. And remember, right once upon a time, he was the starting running back of the Niners, and then he goes down with an injury in week one. So now I think with McCaffrey, and you always have to factor in with McCaffrey, like, as great as he is, he is injury prone. Now you have a, a two-pronged attack. It's going to be McCaffrey's backfield no matter what. But that makes them even better. I'm with you, Greg. I think this is probably a one-sided game. Uh, and I do believe unless Herbert has something really special up his sleeve, which, you know, that'd be nice to see. Like one of those. Which he has before had that up his sleeve. If, if, you, if things like storylines like Herbert versus Tua – um, annoy you or you're interested in them, this would be a great spot for Herbert to throw for 400 yards. You it's know? true. On it, Sunday you know Night I mean? Football, they haven't yeah. gotten – It's asking uh, a lot. It's a great it defense. Is. A it lot is. of pop. And this but is a you, defense – you did say he could be the Michael Jordan of football, even though well, the I'd, sports are different. Yeah, like he, then, his, then his rib was destroyed. I but remember football is completely well, different than that's, basketball. That's why I point, brought up the point that they now are he, – to Staley, who was kind of hiding away the injury to some degree, right. they weren't talking about it, acknowledged he's not been healthy this past month. And so that leads me to look at the tape up and be like, that's what's he going was, on. He guy. was – you know, he could be the Michael Jordan. The, but the guy who is the Michael Jordan to me, and we used to debate about this in West, you know really bristled at it early in Mahomes' career, just put up six touchdowns on seven possessions against this 49ers team. So as as great as this defense is, if you're a great offense, you can still score on them because great offenses do that. But the Chargers aren't a great offense. They're, they're run by Joe Lombardi, who's coaching up Herbert to be like late career Drew Brees. He, he has no big plays. He has no turnover-worthy plays. He's just very safe, dinking and dunking down the field. But that Niners defense also had injuries, too. If we're going to talk about – it's like they were sure. banged up and they're getting Jason Verrett back, which helps. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, so – Jordan at the Garden in 90, March 95 put up double nickels. That's what Herbert needs to do. What's the equivalent of double nickels? 387 yards and four total touchdowns. Well, he's not Beat been Michael Niners. Jordan this season, obviously. Just saying that's double nickels. Yeah. We need double nickels yeah, on Sunday Yeah, well, that'd night. be nice. Monday Night Football. Uh, the Commandos at four and five just had their winning streak snapped head to Philadelphia. Uh, perhaps a lamb to slaughter against the Eagles. The Eagles are now the number one team in the power rankings. The Eagles for about a month now have been the only undefeated team in the league. And I'm sick of talking about that. The Eagles never seem to have a tough game on their schedule because it is what it is. But Mark, this doesn't feel like it's going to be a challenge for Philly. Um, what are your thoughts on this game? I'm with you. I mean, they on offense. And I think we saw this. 
last Thursday night against Houston. That was not their best game, but they found different ways to move the ball, and every week they do. It was still so easy, even with exactly. that. It was their C game, Yeah, but because they were playing a F opponent, D, let's give them the gentleman's F, a D minus opponent, it was still like more than enough. I, I'd even point to their second drive after they had that 18 play touchdown drive to start the game was that that was a there was a Jalen Hurts strip sack on that on that drive which ended it that's fine but there were two explosive plays to AJ Brown and Devontae Smith before that it's like they're just they're impossible to defend I know Washington's defense has been a little bit better but I would point more to the Eagles defense because Howie Roseman remember when Doug Peterson left Philly it was like Howie oh, mother if Howie and this coaching staff or if, if, if Doug and this coaching staff want to go through a rebuild oh well maybe you would have wanted to stuff that rebuild? out build Rebuild, rebuild, rebuilding the Eagles. Weird. It happened in like a year, and now it's like Howie Roseman is getting C.J. Gardner Johnson, Robert Quinn. Gardner Johnson has five picks this year. He had five in his entire career. He's got he's finding guys that work in this defense, and they're creating absolute havoc. Like Javon Hargrave last week, three sacks. It's like it's just different guys stepping up and find the. I don't care where they're playing. Where's the weakness on this team? So if if you're playing basketball, run defense. And, and you uh, and the other and your teammate misses a shot, but you go up for it. What mm -hmm. is that called? Is that a rebound? Rebound. Okay. Is it a Connecticut thing? rebound? Rebound. Did I say I've, rebound? Yeah. No. I mean, I've said it before, probably. I don't know. I don't know where my lexicon came from. I don't. It's not. I don't know the the roots. <laughs> the uh, the Eagles are weirdly reliant. Not <laughs> reliant, but on top of being so good on both sides of the ball, they are first in the league in fewest turnovers, and they're first in the league in forcing turnovers. Yeah. So that would actually indicate a team that's maybe been a little fortunate, although it, it can it can hang over the course of the season, but they're plus 15 in the turnover margin. So they're getting three, you know, a couple extra possessions every game. And now they get to play a Washington team, which doesn't make any plays on defense, is almost last in forcing turnovers, although they've been better over the last month. The, the commanders, uh, defense has improved quite a bit, which Ron Rivera's teams in Washington have tended to do as the season goes along defensively. And on offense, you're going up against Taylor Heineke, who's a mess, who, if if Zach Wilson is playing better now, then Heineke would be my pick as the worst starter in the league. He leads the NFL in turnover-worthy plays uh, in terms of the percentage of how many dropbacks he's had by far. So he's always going to give you a chance, and I'm with you. It just doesn't feel like that the, the they can hang if it's they're getting extra possessions. What are you, what are you demanding, Dan? Breaking news. This from the Associated Press. The Attorney General for the District of Columbia says his office is filing a civil consumer protection lawsuit against the Washington Commanders, owner Dan Snyder, the NFL, and Commissioner Roger Goodell. Attorney General Carl Racine announced a civil complaint for colluding to deceive district residents at a news conference Thursday. Racine said the team and league violated D.C. consumers' rights based on what they knew about the organization's workplace misconduct, alleging Snyder lied about his knowledge of the situation. So there was a shoe. There was a there was an announcement that an announcement was coming, uh, which led to the uh, commanders preemptively firing off a statement that included um, a reference to Brian Robinson shooting. Well, an absurd statement. And uh, Robinson's representatives like, why are you bringing our name into any of this? Which is a fair uh, comment. And now this news. So again, just this shra this cloud sitting over this organization uh, at the time when. It seems like Daniel Snyder is being pushed out of the league. He he has or an attempt is being made. It, well, it's made it more clear since we've last talked about it that he is planning to sell the team. We've reported on on that on NFL Network that it's not just him looking for minority owners. Uh, our guy Ian Rapport indicated it could be as early as March that the team is gone and it can't come here soon enough. The fact that this game is in Monday night, on Monday night, I'm sure this week Flex is, it. <laughs> is an incredible embarrassment to the league. But then I was thinking, well, what other week this season with the Commanders wouldn't be an incredible embarrassment? There, more weeks than not have been. But yeah, the fact that they, they brought up Brian Robinson, we should explain if you hadn't seen it, was just that they pointed out he was shot in broad daylight. And instead of uh, the, Wash the D.C. Attorney General uh, doing a better job controlling crime, which is, by the way, people have pointed out not really what the D.C. Attorney General is doing, <laughs> especially for juveniles right. who they, they found in this case. So none of it made sense. Uh, right. They're holding press conferences. So they just sort of uh, threw their entire city's 
police force under the bus while doing this too, where in their in the fan in the city that these fans live in, and they they quickly apologize. Like the president of the team apologized essentially a couple hours later, but it's well, it feels it's like a it mess. wasn't vetted by all layers of the organization. It came from probably a hot spot, a hot corner, and it could I can't think of a statement from a team that has been messier than that during this run of this show or the run of my life. And they Let's haven't scored <laughs> 17 points, by the way, since week two. There's one more thing. <laughs> the, the run of my well, life. Well, I'm saying it goes – it, it, it st- I'm just also, enjoying your different turns of phrases and oh. pronunciations. Today. Well, you it's had – they were good at – you know, you, you were what, in your tw- 20s back when they last won a Super Bowl? So. Right, but I would say they weren't issuing horrible statements back then. I'm oh, okay, saying that from, no, from no, the, no. the toxic um, nature of the statement. Just back to football for one minute before we uh, take a break. Um, there's a bit of an odd thing going on, too, in Washington with Taylor Heineke because – uh, he's not, you know, as Greg just alluded to, not very good. He struggles. He, his interception cost him the game last week, the Harrison Smith interception. And yet that crowd, that crowd is chanting Heineke uh, throughout that game. It's just like they love him. Um, and I think it might be just one of those things. I don't know if it's Stockholm Syndrome or what, but it's just like a little, it's not Bailey a lot to, Zappy Syndrome. They have one not game a lot to root for. from incredibly yeah. unlikely spots week after week with him and it looked like they were about to beat the six and one Vikings during that game. And I get that. There is a bit of magic that he has brought to like winning these crazy games, but it just doesn't feel that, like the, it can there's last. something likable about him. I don't I don't I'll, like beyond just the play, it, there's an energy to him that's are, not true with Carson Wentz. If you are a fan of like a downtrodden team that goes through a long period of dysfunction and failure, you'll you'll grab onto anything. Yeah. Uh, I've been there and that's where commanders fans are. I hope that an organization get, gets back on its feet because this has been quite a sad grind of late. All right, let's take a break, and uh, we'll get to the draft. All right, welcome back. It's time now for the draft. Tugboat will take you into port with the first overall pick, <laughs> and it's an easy one, and I don't care who's quarterbacking. Uh, for the home team, because it's still a compelling game. Vikings at Bills. Um, major, major uh, intra-conference battle here between a Vikings team that's 7-1, and one, but there's still jabronis out there, like me, who are asking questions whether we should take them seriously. And then there's the Bills, who obviously may be humbled a little bit by the Jets last week at the Meadowlands, but even uh, more distressingly, uh, more distressing on the loss – was the injury suffered by Josh Allen, who is uh, not practicing on Thursday with the elbow issue sustained on um, one of the last snaps of the game against the Jets. And so his, as we tape this, his availability is in question. Case Keenum's the backup, Mark, um, which is a good backup, but it's not Josh Allen. And that would be a major problem with a good Minnesota team coming to town. Well, it certainly leveled the playing field. Uh, I mean, Josh Allen has accounted for 23 of Buffalo's 25 touchdowns this year. And you, there's a lot of quarterbacks that are going to take the majority of the cake there, but he's different. He's special. And, like, I would ask with the elbow injury, it's the ability to throw, but also Josh Allen, the runner. Like, and you have a hurt elbow and you're slamming into the ground on a hurt elbow. Like, probably just lowers, like we just talked about Justin Herbert. Your body is not functioning. Can you do the same things? I mean, even if he's in there, he's going to be playing at not 100%. And I think that opens the door for a Vikings team that I get it. They want to score on the first drive and the last drive every game and somehow win. But uh, I do think Kirk <laughs> it's like Cousins. like we have 10 to 14 points right, right there. <laughs> We just need 10 more. Yeah, Vikings fans hate that we say that, um, but but they do. I can't think of another team that is a very quality team, and when their offense is, is firing, and when Cousins is playing the way he can, and Justin Jefferson is doing what he's doing, like, they are explosive, and they can do a lot, like, on offense, and they're pretty balanced. It's just that they do tend to take naps. The Greg, you talked about it on Sunday, that the final throw from Allen – after the elbow injury, it was actually he made two more throws, I believe, after the elbow injury. The last one was 70 yards through the air 
Tecmo Bowl style. It was the longest air throw of the season by any quarterback. That came immediately after the injury, and maybe, you know, obviously there's adrenaline factoring in. So I don't know, I don't know what to make of that other than he threw it further than anyone after he hurt the elbow. Is that good? Didn't we see Justin Herbert have an inc- like incredible throw in with adrenaline flowing yeah, through, through him the, after Well, that injury. was that, that rib right, injury. Yeah. He also had a really bad throw right before well, that, he, Josh Yeah, Allen. he dirted the ball yeah. as well. So uh, all I'm saying is that was kind of interesting that he made a throw like that. He's a special guy. Um, here's the other thing, Greg. The AFC East is saucy right now. So you could Mm -hmm. say maybe the Bills will play this smart. Um, It's not a division game. It's a chance to give your guy a break with Cleveland up the next week. But I don't know with the, with the jets on a bye at six and three and the, Dolphins also six and three in charging. Whether the Bills feel like they could uh, mm. rest their quarterback if he's um, less than a hundred percent, I don't. I don't think that would be a factor for them. I think they're just thinking about winning the Super Bowl, and I think they are not going to be worried about losing a, a non-conference game in the middle of November. They have you know bigger things in mind. They've swooned in November under Sean McDermott quite a bit, including a year ago when Josh Allen was not playing that well. And I think they will believe that they can win this game with Case Keenum. It, it, I expect Case Keenum to start. I don't think there's any reason not to just because of the medical reporting around it. But who knows? May, maybe they are just trying to rest him. They have major concerns uh, in terms of their injury situation outside of Josh Allen. Tremaine Edmonds, who played great last week, uh, has not been practicing. Greg Rousseau, who has been that strong number two pass rusher next to Von Miller, will not be playing in this game. He is week to week. I know they have pretty good depth there, but that's what made their defense really exciting. Matt Milano limited has returned to practice, yep. so that that's a good sign. Mr. Uh, Limited. <laughs> remember Tredavious White? Remember that. people thought he was going to be playing yes. in week one? Uh, he doesn't seem any closer to playing uh, either. He's Con- been activated, right? But he's just not playing yet? Yeah, they was? have yeah. to activate him at this yep. point because of uh, how late it is in the mm-hmm. season. Kyer Elam, I don't think, practiced on Thursday after practicing Wednesday. So it's a lot of stuff. And uh, I think they're going up against uh, – Vikings offense, which is more complete now since they traded for TJ Hawkinson. I just think that was a really good trade. You could see it immediately paying dividends. I think Kirk Cousins has played a little better the last two weeks than he did the first part of the season. He's given Stephon Diggs a chance to make plays. Sometimes that'll work. Sometimes it won't, but mostly it'll work. The Hawkinson arrival was interesting to watch. He was targeted nine times. He had nine catches. For 70 yards, so it wasn't some monster day. But if you could add another guy that can make a play on that team uh, and also act as a safety valve of sorts uh, for Kirk, that's only going to help matters. So, yes, I agree with you on that. By the way, this is um, a game that I feel uh, is pretty pretty close to a toss-up based on what we know right now. Yeah. Uh, But there is, over at the zoo, uh, a a, a definite thought about Mm. how this game is. Pigs? Hello, gentlemen. It's a 70-degree day in Cincinnati in mid-November. Guess what that means? I'm hanging out at Uncle Rick's house, nice. channeling my brother's spirit right now. And my brother says, don't let Greg Rosenthal talk trash about the Wesling brothers and you. <laughs> You're better analysis than him. You have a better nickname than him. What's the nickname? 60 Cent. More like wrong 60% of the time. Oh. How can you even be considered an expert, dude? You can't get anything right. Jameis Winston's going to be the greatest quarterback of all time. How'd that work out That's for you, you piece, bum? I love it. You're no a one, bum just no like him. Said that. <laughs> now, on to the Bills and Vikings. There's no way the Vikings go into Buffalo and take care of business in November. It's going to be cold. It's going to be rainy. And the Bills take care of business. Lock it up. It's funny. I don't know. I'm not he... certain he's aware that <laughs> Josh Allen's is in no, the He's talking paper? about like, great analysis, not aware that one of the most valuable players in the league probably not. We don't know whether game. he's aware or not, but it was such a secondary issue to him. More, the hit piece on Rosenthal, which was delicious. Majestic. Yeah. That was the, that was the main point of the video this week. Good job, Nick. Would More you have minded had that winded on for three plus minutes, like the no, one? No, he could have. Right, I would have just sat down. I would have cracked open a beer and just enjoyed it all. Greg, do you have a? Do you have any like takedown of uh, Nick to? Well, in terms of a retort? no, I've never said Jameis was the greatest player ever. It was a debate between him and Mariota, and I'm right. still taking Jameis on that. Still right. taking him, and that is uh, the farm where Wes's remains are, or some of his remains with his father. Yeah, right? his his ashes mm-hmm. are, are there, and uh, not a farm, just a nice uh, a nice. 
set up there where Open they where they live. Expanse. Yeah, an expanse. I would expanse. say. Just beautiful it, expanse. They got a little Rebound. a little Rebuild. a little pond. I I am curious. I am curious for the Vikings. One last thing on this one was just. Zadarius Smith has been great. I feel like the offense is better. Everyone complaining about the Vikings, no one takes it seriously. Okay, even if Case Keenum is playing this game, beat the Bills. Here's what we don't want to see, losing to the Bills with Case Keenum. Uh, the Bills are going to the get Bills. Wait, your former quarterback. The Bills are going to have to show some things that they can run the ball, that they can protect Case Keenum. They, I think the Jets exposed a couple things. They really made Josh Allen run to try to gain yardage. It was it was an interesting little game by the Jets there. I know that the Packers and the Cowboys are playing, and I'm taking it as my number two. Overall, is it because the rivalry is renewed? It's because uh, it's a big game, I guess. I'm I'm interested to watch this Cowboys team in general. They showed so much on the way to their bye a couple weeks ago offensively that I want to see if that continues. And no matter what happens to me, this game is compelling. If the Cowboys drill the Packers in Lambeau to put them to three and seven with Mike McCarthy at coach. Ooh, that is delicious TV. And this could be like a home field advantage. That's not an advantage because those Packers fans are tight and they're not going to be happy if they fall behind. And there's a reason to believe they will fall behind because this Cowboys run game is really impressive. Their offensive line has really improved throughout the course of the season. Their young rookie tight ends kind of added the, an element of unpredictability, and they've been very creative with what they can do on the ground. And there's a moment in every Packers game where the Packers defense needs to stop. And then that's the moment where the other team goes on an eight-minute drive <laughs> that like takes the life out of all the Packers fans. And I think the Cowboys are well-suited uh, to be the team that delivers that drive, especially when they're calling design runs in the red zone for Dak Prescott again. Wow, that was a great sight for sore eyes yep. a couple weeks ago. And that's some of the many reasons why I'm locking this game Whoa. up for the Cowboys. This is a wise, wise lock. Okay. okay. You've okay. done it, Greg. I think you've done a great job. The Packers have 17 <laughs> players on the I went anti-Packers. Wanna, That's how I needed to get Mark wanna, back. Uh, you want to join him? No, well, you, you guys are I, together on Thursday night. Yeah, but, but you want to move over? It sounds like you felt... This is your chance to bury the Packers forever, He's trying to Mark. move you off of this. The Thursday Mark. night game's already happened I, I to a lot share, of the listeners I here. I share Greg's like intense confidence that this is going to be a word that Greg used a week ago because this is a true, to me, revenge game for Zaddy Mike McCarthy. Ooh. Right? It really is because it was it was like he got shuffled out of Green Bay. He doesn't know how to call plays. He's archaic. Oh, like, even worse er- than that. Oh, he's getting a massage in his office while they're running team meetings. Right. They they smeared him out the door. He needs to take a year of like deep thought to take a deeper look at the he league. He probably shouldn't get massages during team meetings. Either. He denied it. <laughs> he denied it. He I denied think, so this it. is blood in the water. He has a street named after him outside it's that too, building. It's too particular to be untrue. <laughs> I totally believe it. There's nothing to like about Green Bay right now, and I love this for Dallas. I uh, I love it. I I think. And uh, I'm gonna join Greg. Oh, he's uh, doing it. He. Locking it up. Maybe just because Greg cannot stand. Like, I Greg like spends it. 20% of every show telling us who he would have locked if someone didn't lock what he locked. This is good. Or if he wished he picked this team like over that team. I just don't like seeing the mind did. control that, that Dan has on no, this Mars is that you know jumped away. There are, there is, we are, we are, it is Thursday right now. Yes. There is inclement weather um, heading towards Carolina. I don't like what's happening with that Thursday night game. Absolutely. I think weird things could happen. I'm moving off it so it doesn't That's ruin my, my weekend. Solo lock. Now, um, here's why I also am happy about this. Um, First of all, let's talk Zaddy. By the way, um, I want to see Z- this is this is pure Zaddy energy to me. Since we're talking Mike McCarthy, what about the area? Do you and as a family, as a unit? Miss no, this is b- you guys trying to make me cry. Why don't you ask me? Question about 12 personnel or something. He's like, what the, what the? Uh, because Aaron Rodgers was on Pat McAfee, and um, he said one of the reasons he loves Mike McCarthy so much is he's got that he's got this tough exterior. It's Pittsburgh grit, McCarthy, but he's a big teddy bear on the yeah. inside. That's that big zaddy energy for me. I like that. Mm. I once asked Mike McCarthy at an oh, owner's Zaddy, meeting. Oh, zaddy, you're so extra. 
What, I, Anytime Frag is on the show, I'm cool with it. I asked him what he would be if he wasn't a football coach. Want to take a guess what what career path he would I'm take? I'm going to guess shop teacher. Policeman. Construction worker. Yes. Just wants, he likes to, building wants things. to build things Perfect. and work with the earth. And speaking I'll just of, say this. We're nobody's underdog. Yeah, Zaddy, Zaddy, stop it. Um, and also the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm cool with you guys locking up, um, I'm having some serious second thoughts about our decision to fork the Packers. Mm. And uh, that came in part because of this quote that I heard from Rogers on McAfee this week. I always believe in myself first and I bet on myself first to go out there and to and to to impact the game and to be great. And I still know I have that within me. Still the reigning defending two time MVP. Oh yeah. Regardless who's out there with me, guys want to come battle, they know where to find me. Hell yeah. I'll be I'll be in the center of that huddle, expecting greatness. Trying to inspire the best I can and laying it on the line. And now you may write that off as just nonsense, but I do think this is a game that is obviously of huge importance to Green Bay. Their backs are against the wall, and Aaron Rodgers, as bad as he's played uh, this season at times, especially our most recent game, he is still the defending back-to-back MVP, and I would not be surprised if you get a big game from Rodgers and potentially a run in the Packers uh, to come. I just I don't know. I just got a bit of a Sessler about it. Okay, well hold and on. That's that's hold where I'm coming I, from. My one thing, I, I don't think what's happening with their offense is going away or is suddenly solvable because of his speech on the podcast or the show. Not what I said. It's I know, just a just, reminder of who I, he is I, and what he's capable. You of. lost Romeo Dobbs. Or I, you know, if I'm one of his teammates, I might be rolling eyes at that. Well, right, because first of all, Maybe. it's like he. I'm still me. I still know who I am. He Maybe. doesn't lift up any teammates. You don't have Romeo Dobbs on defense. You lost for Sean Gary. I said it before. There are 17 players on the injury report. Sammy Watkins is banged up and has been a mess. It's him and Alan Lazard, and your running backs are like, right. Aaron he's, Jones isn't healthy. He's come up with kind of a transparent motivational technique through the media every week and he keeps changing it like he's been the nice guy and then the, the mean guy and none of it's working and I think his confidence is one of the reasons why they're struggling. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is playing that poorly. Last week he did yeah. but overall I don't think he's playing that poorly but I think that he's going outside the system like he was in the first year of the Matt LaFleur offense because things aren't working well. And he's back to the reason why Mike McCarthy got fired from Green Bay in the first place because there was a couple years there in the middle of Aaron Rodgers' prime where he just held on to the ball forever, kind of didn't really listen to coaching, much like they're talking about Russell Wilson's not really following the game plan in Seattle kind of like they talked about Dak Prescott, frankly, a year ago when he was struggling in Dallas. And he's just back there trying to make a play and thinking he's going to solve it all. And I look at the teammates around him, and including the defense, that's a huge part in the offensive line, and I just don't see it. I don't see it. Um, How about this? That's all fair. (laughs) One side of this will be right, uh, and we'll bring this up on Sunday show. Okay. All right. N- not that I'm hugely confident of the Packers because the Whoever Cowboys are Whoever is wrong will be accountable for being wrong, correct? Yes. Will they? Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. Eric Stokes also expected to miss this game. Sammy Watkins might miss this game. You mentioned Dobbs. Elton Jenkins, their offensive lineman. Oh, also Sammy Watkins and Romeo Dobbs aren't playing? <laughs> what are the offense going to do Dobbs without those guys? Romeo Dobbs might have been their best wide receiver. <laughs> oh, he stinks. But they, they all stink. That's the problem. Oh, they don't I'm have, just saying we, we, can't say, we can't say that, I agree with they're, that they're point. dead because those guys aren't playing. I agree with you. Taking Sammy Watkins hasn't made a play since Super Bowl 55. Or well, whatever. who are you pointing at then who's going to suddenly Sammy emerge? Sammy Watkins as killed a, them a week ago. Number 12. absolutely fair. Number 12. 12 throwing to 12. 12 is going to... Their supp- leading receiver is Robert Tunyon. We buried we buried the Packers literally on the show. We forked him, and I'm just noivous. Now yeah. he's playing both sides of the fence. That we're going to get Now he's going to somehow be right for forking for not forking the Packers when he's the one that forked <laughs> I know, him. I know. I, you can trust in number 12. I'm trusted in number 11. At no point in this preview did we mention Micah Parsons or the best unit in this game by far, the Cowboys' defense. Is Everything you're saying it. makes yeah, sense. Yeah. I'm just saying... Um, all right. True greatness. Guess Legendary what? Okay. greatness. Table sometimes, it. Table it. Sometimes we'll surprise you. Table it. Welcome to Around the NFL, presented by Barefoot Wines. I'm going to go Cleveland and Miami. We really do need this big guy. That's a sh- Okay. Okay. I 
strategy. I have a strategy, <laughs> Greg. Don't, don't. <laughs> he immediately takes a shook game right off the bat. Ooh. I am scheduled for. He does love the Browns. Multiple though. games, but we I'll tell back. you why. No, he doesn't. He's not a Browns. Fan. No, not at all. This, this, You're this, not allowed to bring that up. Will you ever stop talking, Greg? <laughs> at any point what about on Dan? the end. What about Dan? Dan is the host. Dan jumped in. I have to talk. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. I don't know what to say at this point. I, I got like this is the game I want to see because look at the rest of the slate. I have no problem taking this game. I I don't know if anyone can stop Miami's offense because the difference with what we just talked about with Green Bay is that what Mike McDaniel, who I'll never forget, Dan, when we were at that combine and we mentioned this before. Oh yes. With that Niners coaching staff and people were coming out of the woodwork telling us like. This guy, Mike McDaniel, is the reason mm -hmm. we are what we are. And it was like, all right, this guy is like a little tiny dude and like he's a brainiac and like, you know, he he's is different. He is scheming the wide receivers so totally open. And I, I, this, I'm sort of exhausted with, I think we all are with this Tua debate. I don't think Tua is like the physical equivalent of Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen especially, but he totally works in this offense because of the way that he operates with Tyreek Hill, with Jalen Waddell. They're totally wide open, and when he throws them off a yard or two, they make up for it with their skills. I mean, they're just like completely dangerous and unstoppable, and I want to see if Cleveland's defense from that Cincinnati game where for the first time all season, I thought the way they used their defensive line, um, I hadn't seen this all year before, made life very uncomfortable for Joe Burrow. I don't know if you can do that against this Dolphins team. Denzel Ward sounds like he will be back. He said he's going to play. That helps. But they have been getting killed. They are one of the worst teams in the league. At the six, they've allowed the six most explosive plays. That, to me, is not a good recipe for stopping a Dolphins passing game that has been essentially frying everyone week after week. Yeah, I think we need to find out if the Browns' defense is starting to turn their season around with that great performance or if that was just a division game. Hollywood uh, opponent. Uh, right, because it sounds like an aberration. Because I, it wouldn't shock me. There's no reason personnel-wise that they should be one of the worst defense in the league. They should be average at worst. I think Mike McDaniel deserves a ton of credit. I think Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill individually deserve yes. more credit. The combination of those two and the intelligence uh, of Mike McDaniel in, in the front office, but I think Mike McDaniel was a huge part of it, to give up everything for Tyree Kill because they already knew they had Waddell and his speed is so special. And he's a, he's a top 15 potentially receiver on his own and, and just the two of them breaks the brains of opposing defenses and you're right there's not a huge reason to think that the Browns are suddenly going to be the defense to solve it yeah the question for me for Miami is I want to see you know two has got to stay healthy and you hope he does I'm kind of curious to see how this offense looks in cold weather when it starts getting nasty Fair. in the next uh, six to eight weeks uh, but to me defense would be the biggest question because they just got rolled by Justin Fields and on balance, you know, they went and traded for uh, Bradley Chubb and that will in time that will make them better. Uh, but do will they have enough stops in them when Tua and company do get slowed down, as will happen when their competition goes up? That That's the only question. But I see this team. I'm, I'm in now. Like it took yeah. me a while to come around on the Dolphins, but this does feel like a 10 to 11 win team. Um, unless some things that are unforeseen, like injuries or whether this offense At this point, that would be disappointing. Later on. Right. At this point, 11 feels like the floor because 11 is, what, five and four the rest of the way? I think they, they've got their sights set higher, and I, I think they, they should. But you're right about the defense, and this is a tough defensive matchup. The Browns are a great running team. It's a, it'll be interesting to see how much they trust Jacoby Brissett because the, the Dolphins are 31st in the league in pass defense DVOA. They're a good run defense. They're terrible creating pressure on their own. That's partly why they traded for Chubb. So in theory, this is a game that would enrage Dan because they won't give Nick Chubb the ball enough. <laughs> I mean, Nick Chubb has the fourth most carries in the league. More. Okay. But More. I mean, there's not that much separating from the first. Where's most, Kareem Hunt? And they had a bye week. Kareem Hunt is mostly like not his, his – they're not splitting carries. He doesn't they don't have to good, split. The way. Hunt. All right. But I, I, I would say this, like I like Brissett against the Bengals, and he's done this for quarters in a row. He's played really clean, and he does have chemistry with Amari Cooper. There may be no David Njoku. We don't know right now. That he, Njoku's having an awesome season. People were killing the Browns when they signed him. Sounds like he's out based him. on the initial timeline. Right, line. like that. that's a big loss for them. They don't have a lot of weapons, and that's why they're a run-heavy team. And I think the Cleveland right now, they're 3-6. Is he going to do it? I'm not going to do anything. Oh. They're 3-6. and six. Like, 
They've blown so many games this season. They're three and they five. Three and five. Could, three and five. They could be. They could be five and three. But like a lot of Browns fans, I feel like that game reawakened some belief that this team could do things. And this is not an unwinnable well, game. It might be. The Dolphins have been in the final seconds battling the last two weeks against the Lions and the Bears. Their games are always in the 30s. That's kind of where I expect this game to be, in the 30s down to the wire. They've had one bad game all year, the Browns. I think it, it, people are sleeping on there better than people realize. Mm-hmm. Uh, their losses, 31-30, 23-20, 30-28, bad game against New England, 38-15, and then 23-20 to Baltimore on the road. And That's and, why Mike McDaniel said this Cleveland Browns team is no joke. This team can beat any team in the NFL. Uh, I think I agree with that. When they are yeah, when too. they're playing well, they match up in, in a very kind of wide open league well with anybody. There are only three games left, by the way. Hmm. Of Browns, spicy. I don't if you're spicy. To... You're just spicy. And they have, they have spicy Buffalo food next stays week. Spicy for the most part, right? They... So you got to get this. You you can't go three and six and Buffalo. then play Buffalo. We'll see what Buffalo's quarterback situation is then. So, but and then you get Tampa Bay at home, and then everything changes because Deshaun Watson enters the scene, which I know a lot of us don't want to see Deshaun Watson on the field, but don't let the Browns get to 500 or above when Watson gets there because he is a great quarterback. And I don't know if it's going to, if it's going to immediately lead to the Browns taking a step up. It might take time. He might struggle entirely this year. Who knows? Cause he hasn't played in so long, but that's right around the horizon. Now. Marky, another one. Well, this game is a game that I would have avoided hardcore um, had certain events not taken place this week. It is a late game. I cannot wait to see <laughs> Jeff Saturday okay. and the Indianapolis Colts go up against the Raiders. Just so everybody knows, that during the break, we were all like, man, the show's run a little long. Uh, we should try to tighten things up. And then Mark launches into like a 37-second wind-up just to pick his next game. <laughs> But then you spend 30 seconds commenting on my wind-up. I understand that. I understand. So that. it's a team effort. There's no way we get out of here under three hours. There's no chance. Well, we're enjoying ourselves. We are having a great time. Go ahead. I, I just, I, to me, this is like how, who, no matter what you're, no matter what you're doing, or you're not going to be watching this game out of the corner of your eye, just to see what unfolds with. And the one thing about Jeff Saturday, I, I get that everything got he he got killed, the Colts are getting killed, and there's a lot of reason for it, for a lot of the hiring behind it, the whole thing. But Jeff Saturday, according to everyone in the building, waltzed in and gave like an incredible opening speech and kind of won a bunch of people over. Uh, uh, to me, I will see. DeForest Buckner was like, this guy came and brought energy. We needed that. I know, Dan, you'll never believe in something like that. You'll just sit there and gruff and groan. But I, to me, maybe you won't believe in it. Maybe by Sunday. I don't. I most it, certainly they're, they're don't. They're also a yeah. bad football team on offense. But they do have a good defense. And if Jeff Saturday can make one difference and help the most expensive offensive line in the league, Play a better game on Sunday. So then, why don't why don't ask why don't you hire him to be the offensive line coach? Like, well, he already I, was consulting. He's going to have so that. many. He's going to be so busy as a head coach. You would imagine. Well, but, that, but, that, so, but wait, but we can hem and haul over the decision. I think we did that on our last show. I just want to see how it goes because I, I think one thing that's interesting here is that it quietly is masking over the second biggest, most disappointing coaching scenario in the league, which is Josh McDaniels and the Raiders. Makes this game even bigger for the Raiders yeah. because if they lose this game to Jeff Saturday's Colts and the number 32 offense in the league, according to DVOA. With Parks Frazier running the show. It It is a complete and utter embarrassment on top of losing all these 17-point games. And the Raiders are struggling through it right now. On Thursday, they placed Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller on injured reserve. And Hunter Renfro finally showed up last week this yeah, season. Yeah, he's been quiet. And he is having the worst season, really, of his career. But well, we might know there might be more of a reason now. He's obviously banged up enough to disappear from the roster. Right, and he had a concussion issue early in the year. But he played really well last week, and I thought, oh, this has been missing from the Raiders' offense. Derek Carr and McDaniels, and they've all gotten a lot of the focus, and I get it. Their defense is dead last in DVOA. Brutal. So this is the worst defense in the league on paper against the worst offense in the league. And that defense Something's gotta give. with Patrick Graham, who I like that higher and, and a lot of old Mike Mayock players and Chandler Jones has been an utter fiasco for, for the money that they got him. It's been one of the worst free agent signings. It's are you, Dan, are bad. you not curious about oh, no, how it goes? I am That's all I'm saying. Curious. I am. I'm not but lifting I'm, up the cults. No, some, you know, all right, let me, let me make myself clear. I'm curious, uh, like, 
when you're rubbernecking on the Garden State Parkway and you're checking out the accident. I'm not okay. I'm not curious and they're like, "Whoa, Jeff Saturday won some dudes over because he's uh, you know, well spoken and charismatic." Hold on. Like, hold, that I, doesn't can I respond, matter can I respond to, to that just Go because ahead. like Go ahead. I all I'm saying is like <laughs> it's been it it's been such a uniform destruction of the cults from right. A to Z by every single person in the media that uh, there is something about human okay. life and sports where like maybe for some reason they respond to Jeff Saturday and like we or have that to, everyone's uh talking like that all but, right but it's like but what like but that doesn't I just, surprise I'm open-minded me just to be, see what happens because everyone all. that knows saturday um everyone that worked with him at espn people like steve weish uh said great guy people he's known as like a really good dude right. I'm, I'm sure he's good at connecting with people but this is head coaching at the nfl with a roster that is brutal uh a quarterback who shouldn't be starting in the nfl an offensive line that is badly disappointed a star running back that's on one leg a team that knows the whole thing is getting blown up a coaching staff behind this in over his head head coach that is pissed off angelo for sure the new offensive coordinator parks frazier literally like getting coffee for the coaching staff under Frank Reich three or four years ago. Now he's the play caller, and I think... If it were a movie, it would be like one of the greatest things oh, ever. Oh, yes. That's that, all. I'm just like rooting Mark, for I, something I can, special I can see that Mark is in on these Colts winning this game, at least. And I, I get it. They're, it's sort of like the, the dead cat bounce And Zach principle. Kiefer, who knows this team way more than we do, he said... He sees maybe one win in them. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is one win uh, that the Colts have for the rest of the season. But I think they've now been constructed to lose as many games as possible. And I think the Raiders, unless they've completely quit on their coach, will seize on this as an opportunity to, to get right. I, I don't know if you could lock this game up. Uh, but You could. What if feels... I locked up the Colts? What would you do? Oh, I, I would, would give you. I would give you. I, would, give I, would you, uh, you. I don't need your praise. You should. I'm not I would doing Venmo it. That's, you. That is, you, you Venmo me. Remember when you Venmo me? Ten, no, one second, Justin. Remember when you Venmo me ten dollars to not say something I was saying? Yeah, over to and over stop again? saying before the show uh, limited, like over yeah. and over. You kept saying it to Greg and Greg and I's ear and the people behind the glass right. four hundred to five hundred times in right. a row. I would return those ten dollars if you locked up this team, but I don't know if that counts as gambling, so we won't do but it. Then I tumble yes, down Justin. the standings further. I just want to say, you know, you talk about the Colts possibly only winning one more game. They might finish fourth in the AFC South. Wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> no one could have predicted <laughs> that, huh? Grave Digger like was on front of that. Justin. I, I mean, I you weren't like in front one. of it. They're a game and a half up on no, the Texans. I, we'll see what happens. Yeah, he's he was ahead of that the Colts Let's are going to be are in two horrific. Months. He was ahead of it. By the way, Greggy. are you ready to give the sandwiches that the Seahawks will have a top five pick? You might as well just bring them in sure. right now. But remember when yeah. I said it and I was told that it was hanging shallots because it was such an easy thing to predict? Well, then you lost on both Nobody ends. was covered in glory on that one. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> You're turning that around on us. So you took something that looked safe and you were horrifically wrong on it. <laughs> Greg, you Dan up. does not turn things around. I don't know where you're coming with that. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. No, I absolutely will lose those. But I I'm thought just saying, Graver was going to lock up the Raiders there. That's seemed like what he was going to do. You want it? Go for it. Thought about it. Have a bolder choice coming. All right. Not that sure. one doesn't pass the mirror test for me. All right. Sure. Very well. You're a man of I honor. I mean, the Raiders are Greg. two and seven. I think that that would pass a mirror test. Greg, go ahead. Okay. I'm uh, going to take the Jags Chiefs because I do enjoy watching a Tony Romo game. Ultimately, that's the tiebreaker for me in a big spot. I don't mind watching uh, Patrick Mahomes live. How entertaining is this guy? Let's uh, not take him for granted. He really uh, – Is there anyone here taking – he's a great quarterback, an all-time great. We're we're blessed to watch him. Kind of that <laughs> since his MVP season, he hasn't quite been at that same exact level at least. And right now, he is back. Like, I was not allowing MVP talk. You know how I think premature MVP mm -hmm. talk. Who needs it? Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to have that. You're not allowed to have that fun, mm -hmm. Dan. Mm -hmm. We've reached week 10. Oh, thank God. I'm allowing it. He's the MVP. He's the MVP right wow. now. Everything just got brighter. I'm, I'm into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's the one when he's in structure, he's amazing. And when he's out of structure, he's Who amazing. Who did you pick for MVP before the season? Patrick Mahomes. Oh, okay. Mm. See, we all have our little agendas, don't we? I didn't bring it up. I got you to bring it up. That's how you do it. It's a logical we have a pick. Little agendas. <laughs> don't act like Mahomes was terrible the last couple of years. He was... Remember the divisional playoffs against uh, Buffalo? That was one of the most remarkable I, feats of quarterback play ever. No, I'm not acting like he's terrible, but I do think he's had the best start to a career that any quarterback I've ever seen has had. I hear that. And yeah. right now he's kind of right back to another mini peak here. You know, Brady and Manning, like all the greats, have 
slight ups and downs. And right now he's peaking, and it's it's fun to watch. There's not much reason to believe the Jaguars will slow him down, but you never know. There is not a lot of reason. I the, from the Jaguars angle, like your Trevor Lawrence, we kept asking for it. I thought he had his best game. I think we all thought that was his best game last week. It, they're they're hidden away. They're always playing at 1 p.m. in the middle of nowhere. Like I would love to see for once. This is a great spot for Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, but especially Lawrence and Christian Kirk to hang with the Chiefs. That would be a big turning point. It's a Romo for them. game, not exactly right. the national game. But I don't know why it's a Romo game, but I, because I guess there's I no do. other options. The next best no. was Dolphins Browns. So be a better I, choice in my book. I, I, I know Tony Romo likes to wax poetic about you know Patrick Mahomes for four straight hours. So Steve, I understand the motivation. This is so on your radar, Steve. Spag- Nolo is kind of a a test young quarterbacks have to pass. And I know the Chiefs defense isn't very good this season, but he's struggled against cover two. And Spagnola just kind of throws a lot at you and sees how you're going to react as a young quarterback. So well, I'm interested to hear Romo analyze that too. Isn't it fair at this point to say like Trevor Lawrence? <laughs> trying like, to defend my pick. Trevor it's Lawrence, no stand either. up and do something here. It would be a nice spot for that. You don't have to defend it because I'm up with the next two picks. And it's not, yeah, no, what's no there? Great shakes at this no, point going it's, forward. It's floating trash. Go up. for it. All right, I will hit the next game. And, you know, two teams I haven't enjoyed watching this year. But, again, I have to grab a late game. And uh, I'll grab Arizona at Los Angeles. An important game. No doubt. I know Major you guys, quarterback questions here. Yeah, Major. Uh, Matthew Stafford was placed into the concussion I protocol. I won tickets to this game, by the way. You did? Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, it was a, a work raffle, and an email was sent out at it 9.17, doesn't, you don't seem and like I responded a, at 9.19. It wasn't a raffle. It was an email to talent right. that whoever responded first Ooh, that's gets a little the blue tickets. Bloody. Well, yeah. guess who responded first? It's not a raffle, I thought though. it was like a working-class raffle, like, I'll buy six tickets. No, you're right. It was it was whoever responds first, but it, it went out. The email, I saw it at 9.17. I responded at 9.19 and got an email at 9.20. You got it. You so what are you going to do with them? TBD, I was going to give them to Jason Zumwalt. Or, <laughs> Zummy? Or, he's in Arizona, though. This Zummy. game is in L.A. You should go cover it. There's only one late game each. Be kind of fun. We can get well, Sessler's uh, you have, you sights have, and sounds. Maybe you have, I will. You have clearance from the gang if you want to do we it. We could switch games maybe, like the late game, if I decided to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You just okay. drafted it. Yeah. It will cost you a first-round pick convoluted. next week. Well, that's fine. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to you. But I could. Let me think about it. I All like right. to hurt my friends. <laughs> Perfect. Rams, Cardinals. Ooh, yes. Always feels good to hurt your friends. Stafford is uh, in the concussion protocol. I don't know what happened last week. Was there a play that people are circling back to saying this is where he went down? They said it happened in the game, but that he didn't have symptoms until days later. Sure. Okay. His wife had a, um interesting Instagram post where she was just kind of emotional for the most part and said she had all the emotions. And one of them was anger. And I kind of get that. Your your husband had a concussion in the game and no one did anything or noticed. It still keeps This still keeps happening no matter how much – Attention yeah. is placed on it. It does. So if we don't have Stafford, who's who's behind him right now? John Wolford. All right, so but it's Wolford. not co- it's not even confirmed that would be Wolford over uh, Bryce Hopkins. I think it'll be Wolford though. It- Either way, it's a very bad situation. A horrific situation for the Rams if Stafford doesn't play because the offense is already kind of a mess with Stafford. Take him out of the mix, and uh, I don't know what happens. This feels like a a team with a 10-point ceiling, uh, quite frankly, without Stafford. Um, which you know the Cardinals they'll out they can outdo themselves. So I don't I don't this would be the Cardinals if they do get indeed a ga- a team without their uh, star quarterback on the field. The Cardinals should win this game, uh, but again week after week, and we saw it again against the Seahawks. This team is just sloppy and undisciplined. Um, I know you guys have been checking in on the hard knocks. Did we learn any nugs the, from the hard We did, actually, knocks? because on the here. flip side of this, K- Kyler Murray, they announced he has a hamstring issue. Sounds like that's he's got a better chance to play, but hard knocks revealed where it happened. He had a 17-yard run in the first half, but then a couple plays later, you remember, right before the half, he scrambled, and it was a beautiful scramble, but then the ball was popped out by Ryan Neal, and he basically walked over to the trainer and said he couldn't fully open up on the run because of the hamstring. So Hard Knocks taught us that. I thought it taught us a little bit about the DeAndre Hopkins, Kyler, tete-a-tete. Yeah, to I, some saw, degree. I, I thought it was really interesting. I, it's not a pick-me-up type of show. It's a show of people under a lot of pressure between Cliff Kingsbury, Kyler Murray, Steve Keim, 
the owner, Hopkins. The owner flying around in his personal jet. It's bad vibes, and I, I think they edit it in a way that you're not miserable watching it, but you can feel the tension. And to me, you can that, see the seams on the edit in this one? No, no, but I, what I mean is, like, there's only so much editing you can do. Right. I find watching them under this sort of pressure like compelling, if if nothing else. I don't I know agree. if that'll stay for se seven weeks, but you can see how they're not comfortable right now. And Kyler's very hard on himself, and you can see he's hard on others. People got into the Hopkins thing where they're yelling back and forth. I didn't. I think that was a totally normal I exercise of two players who want to win. I do too. But win. Kyler Murray told him to calm the you know the yeah. expletive down. I mean, I think Kyler Murray just <laughs> seems to kind of lose his cool like week after week, which, which I find enjoyable. Um, so the Rams... The terrible vibes. They could lose this game still, the Cardinals. Yeah, I'm kind of in that boat. The Rams' um, defense, surprisingly, has not gotten to the quarterback this year. 21, 20.1% 20 QB pressure rate in 2022. That's the worst in the entire NFL. Aaron Donald is healthy and playing every week on that line. And Kyler Murray, this is from Next Gen Stats, has been brutal this year when under duress. His completion percentage is well below 50%. Hmm. He has not thrown a touchdown under pressure, six picks, averaging less than four yards at attempt. And wow. if, if he's compromised uh, with a leg issue, you would think maybe – this is a game where maybe Aaron Donald himself makes the huge play that swings a low-scoring affair. Uh, I don't know if I'm seeing a lot of points in this game. I can I tell you one like crazy Rams stat that they have the highest three and out rate of any team that Matthew Stafford has ever been a quarterback of through the first nine games. That's from Jordan Rodriguez of the Athletic. They're broken with us on Monday night. Well, it, it's it makes sense, and this is by far the worst Matthew Stafford's ever played. It, he sort of avoided criticism because the situation's so bad. And I and I think that's fair, that he's mostly avoided it. But he's not raising the level, and he's not the same guy he was a year ago. I think he would have come up with a few more plays a year ago than he has this year. I don't think John Wolford will be better. I was going to say, I hope you're not going down this no, road. No, I don't think he'll be better, but I don't think it's going to get – much worse because what's going to be, be much I, worse? Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, it, you is, never know. They, but they do get Brian Allen. It sounds like Brian Allen, the center, will come back, which would help John Wolford a lot too. And Coleman Shelton may come back at guard. I have, I still. You said never doubt the MVP. I do still have a feeling that like never doubt the heart of a champion a little bit here with Wolford starting. The defense has shown us we were in person for it, mm -hmm. uh, Dan and Mark. Mm -hmm. That the defense can go win a game against the Cardinals on their own. They did it basically in week two, was it? That was kind of an ugly game, but the mm -hmm. defense did well. I could just see them being all fired up that they win a 13-10 to 10 game with That's Wolford. what I'm That's thinking, all. too. Yeah. Yeah. But it really – you have – it's a top-heavy roster, but you need Aaron Donald. You need Jalen Ramsey. You need Bobby Wagner. Somebody's got to make a play. I'm not going to say they, they need to score a touchdown, but, hell, it wouldn't be a bad thing. Yeah, they, they might. They could really use – one of these dudes to step up and win the game and Stafford. We forget one of these weekly Billy Price shooting the ball over Kyler Murray's head scenarios. Oh my God. That, that could happen. You can tell how it's annoyed. like a play in their playbook. You, you can, can tell how annoyed they all are at Billy Price. Yeah, the Cardinals are missing four of their starting offensive linemen, and that's that's been a part of all this. And they're going to be missing ba Buda Baker, who is kind of the centerpiece of the show uh, as yeah. their emotional leader, and now he's out for two to three weeks. Oh, I was going to share. A, okay, I'm going to save it for the Friday Fun Show. Hang on. Writing it down. So Take I don't a note. Forget. That's good. Take Everyone, notes. pregnant pause. Uh, pure counting stat, but sometimes I like him. Not everybody likes him. Uh, Matthew Stafford on pace for 17 touchdowns this year. He had 41 last year. All right, that brings it up to the old Zeuser who uh, uh, snakes it up and. Um, all right, Gravedigger, ride with me, baby. Broncos at Titans. Let's talk about it. Hop on, Justin. Uh, you got the Denver Broncos coming off there by Russell Wilson. Everybody making fun of him every day over and over again. But also, Nathaniel Hackett and their coaching staff and Russ, I guess that's it. They got a blow there to be able to kind of reset some things. They got the win in England heading into the bye so I am actually interested, not that I'm buying in on the Broncos, and I know now they're defensively a lesser team after they sold at the deadline, 
Um, I'm interested to see if the Broncos have a little fight in them offensively. At the same time, they're going now to Nashville against a Tennessee team, Justin, that we just saw on Sunday Night Football. They don't play around on defense. Even with the losses they they have had, they've been very good uh, this year. So feels like it sets up well for the Titans, but I'm still interested to see what kind of Broncos team we get in this game. It will be interesting to see what kind of toll that Sunday night game took on the Titans defense. You see, good call. A lot of snaps. Jeffrey Simmons has been in a walking boot Wednesday and Thursday this week. We'll see what he looks like on Friday, but his status could be in jeopardy. Amani Hooker still not playing. Bud Dupree is not practicing right now. Zach Cunningham is not practicing right now. And Ryan Tannehill is still limited in practice. So if Malik Mm -hmm. Willis has to start a third straight game, it'd be a lot on Henry against a pretty tough Broncos defense. Dan, over under two and a half backup quarterbacks you'll be watching this weekend. Oh, think? wow. Okay. Well, where are we at on Tannehill right now? What is the situation? I'll, so he's been I'll limited. bang the under because I want to be optimistic, but yeah. go ahead. I think, okay, for the third week in a row. Oh, no. Whatever. Okay. What the listener needs to know now and the viewer needs to know, whatever Justin says, the opposite is what's going to happen at quarterback for the Titans. Should I reverse jinx it? I don't know. This? Just go with your heart. You what is your heart? Jinx it. So, I think court. Tannehill will play this week. But I also based could, on what? Based on the fact that he's actually on the practice field this week, he's speaking to reporters. Did you at hear the his comments? And yet you were so confident he would play the other weeks when he wasn't even practicing. Well, what do he you was feel about he that? was a little limited last week. He didn't look ready to return on the like when he warmed up before the Kansas City game. Couldn't even plant his foot. It seems pretty about- clear he had a high ankle sprain. Adam yeah. Schefter like alluded to it but wouldn't report it, which made me think like. He knows, but wasn't allowed to report it. it like Tannehill's own words. He said, it's not something that gets better overnight. It is definitely testing my patience up until this point and is still doing so. Yes. And Sounds he said, great. he also said, it's something I could be dealing with for a while. But the question, like there's a difference between something you're dealing with and something you can play through. I think he's going to reach a point where he can play through it, but it's also a not good Titans offensive line that maybe they don't want him out there if he can't be mobile and get away from pressure. But, like, the drop-off from him to Malik Willis I was going to say, so the, other, the other part that. of this is Ryan was there on the sideline watching Malik Willis on Sunday night, and I'm sure that's on his mind. Like, I know our team is in trouble because this kid, and this is not saying he's a bust or anything, he's a rookie, but he's in over his head right now, and are we going to yeah. send him out there against a Denver defense that's been the best part of that team uh, and risk losing a conference game. It, it's it's a tough call, but I would think Tannehill, if he can move enough, he's going to come back. But we don't know. It's been tricky. So you're saying he is playing, though? I think he'll play, and I think this game is like a race to 15 points. Whoever crosses that threshold first that feels right. probably wins. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. I, I look at this Broncos defense, and they're maybe the best pass defense in the league, and they're a really good pass rush. But the Titans are like, okay, that's fine. Bet. <laughs> they're like, like, we're not going to pass. We're anyways. never going to pass. Even if it's Ryan Tannehill, we're never going to pass. And you kind of can run on them. I, You know, I'm curious if Denver could come out of the bye. I think they're among the most likely bad first-half teams to be much better in the second half. Not because Russell Wilson will play great, but just that they'll have – enough drives they come up with a drive here and there and you're like wow they have good players on their team Dulcich is a nice uh, young player who's been added to the mix Jerry Judy, play a dog. Judy's playing well it's like if you just get one extra Russell Wilson drive if you just get him to be mediocre then they can go at least five and three the rest of the way and like turn around and be I, a I, would, I think it'd be a major team. major letdown for the Titans to after coming off a psychologically damaging loss to the Chiefs where they played so well and did everything you could ask up until the end to lose to Den- to Russell Wilson and the Broncos after what we've seen from their offense. They did essentially play two games last week, though. 90-plus snaps. That's, Ooh, that's good not- call. That's always on my radar. And Jeffrey well, and Simmons re- is in a walking boot this week. He They're just repeating all the things yeah, you've already said. No, I know. I know, I know, I know, Graver, I know you said that, but, like, but Frabel said it. Like, he didn't even have like defensive players practice, essentially, so far. But he was saying fine, the rugged like, nature of the Sunday night game, I think that's what he was – I, there is a chance. Yeah. Did they say Burks. 91 snaps? Well, cut, though, cut, cut he didn't say the number. Cut, I said cut over what 90. Greg and I said from the show. No, yours, yours can go stay. For Greg's got to go. Give Greg's me a break. I did say over. All right, 90. I'm leaving um, this podcast. Give me a break. Greg I get out of here. Traylon Burks <laughs> activated to. to it's because practice. Mark and I are like talking about. Wait, who should Chancy take the shook game? I have four games. What's happening? Okay, everybody, calm down. Let me calm things down. A lot of behind the scenes stuff going on. Just keep an eye on Traylon Burks. That's all. They need. They need Burks to come back and and be a guy. Because where's Robert Woods this season? Now, I know with Willis it's going to be a mess, but they need some guys to step up if we're going to actually take 
the Titans seriously. Let's yeah. take Did you a- hear that they Derek actually Henry, they the faced the rushing, Chiefs yeah. for 91 snaps on on Sunday night, the Sunday night football game? Right. And I think the injury situation yeah. on the defensive line, like Bud Dupree, Jeffrey Simmons, could be a factor. Just a little nugget. <laughs> Good nug. Valuable nugget. Okay. Let's take a break and we'll finish out the draft. <laughs> We're back. Uh, let's close this thing out. Greggy, your final pick. I'm going to take the Texans Giants. Wait, why would I do that? I'm taking the Lions <laughs> Bears. Sorry. <laughs> we'll allow it. Sorry, Mark. You hadn't okay. turned in your card, so that's you're fine. Good. Mark <laughs> probably would have wanted that game. We were no, tr- we were trying to figure out what what makes sense here. Lions and Bears for a team that's three and six. The Bears are suddenly intriguing, and the Lions defense. Since the bye, I think if you watch them closely, are are playing better. They're playing with more energy. I know they fell apart uh, for most of that uh, Dolphins game, especially in the second half, but everyone does against the Dolphins. They played with better energy. I think they're fine more playmakers in general. They played well for most of the game against the Cowboys. That they could slow down Justin Fields and this Bears offense enough, whereas the Bears have totally flipped the script and their defense is struggling. So I think this is a compelling game, and I want to get behind the team around the NFL. I think it's a good late draft pick. Yeah, it is. I mean, the Bears are fun to watch. I mean, they're, they, I don't know if the Lions can slow them down. No one slowed down what they're doing on the ground. They have 225-plus rushing yards in four straight games. That is tied for the longest streak in NFL history. With the 1976 Steelers, I don't know why Whoa. Detroit won't allow them to create history this weekend. And their yardage per game is the most by a Bears team since Walter Payton won the MVP in 1977. And it looks legit week after week. Justin Fields is converting long third downs into first downs with his legs over and over at a higher rate than any quarterback this season. And I think he's grown as a passer week after week. I'm not saying that you know there's still a lot to work on with that game. But we spent all offseason saying that they they kind of left him out to sea. There's no support around him. If Chase Claypool can get a little bit better in that offense, like there are some weapons there, and they are dominating people physically on the ground. I love that kind of team. You know what I love about it? Because you're right. And those were fair criticisms, I think, heading into this they season. Uh, he has to learn a new offense. They didn't really beef up. They traded Allen Robinson. But you know what? I think what he surprised – maybe some people over – on the west side of Cincinnati aren't surprised. But I think what he surprised me for sure as someone who doesn't study the college game, how dynamic he is. And he has proven, I think, in these last couple of weeks that he could be a type of guy that just doesn't matter what's around him for the most part because he will make plays. And he, he already obviously is a dynamic rusher of the football. Uh, but the throws he was making to me was even more encouraging in the last few weeks. And I just think with him, yeah, the Bears are going to be a work in progress this year, but I think they're a berserker candidate yeah. going down the stretch this year. And look out in the NFC North if they make some smart decisions. They have like a billion dollars in, in cap space because of what they've look done out. here. He has real strengths, and I think once they are trying to like focus on the strengths, then they're – better off. The design runs have been 24 in the last three weeks after only four before that. Good play call. And then he's a good deep ball thrower. He's an accurate deep ball thrower. So if you use the play action to get him a little time, he can throw the ball I'll well down the field. take it a step further. And if, if the officials don't blow that pass interference call on uh, Chase Claypool with a minute 35 to play last week, I think there's a good chance they win that game against Miami, mm. and everyone's talking about Justin Fields right now. So instead, it's been a little bit obscured what's happening here, but I think he's turning into one of the great stories uh, of the season, and I think by the end, it's by the time it's over, um, my point was going to be that he'll be Offensive Rookie of the Year, but he can't because he's in his second year, so Kenneth Walker <laughs> will win it How about because this? Brees Hall got hurt. But at the same time, <laughs> the first year of his career it was such a mess that – Justin Fields is making the leap what in about year two, Luke which Getze. is amazing. Uh, Luke Getze. Who? Luke Getze, <laughs> assistant of the year. Because he did what Nick Sirianni did a year ago, completely changed the offense, what, what Harbaugh did when Lamar Jackson I mean, came ha- in. All right, the first month still counts, though. I know, but you've grown a quarterback. Give it to, I, give it to Shane Waldron, maybe, in Seattle. How about that? Uh, well, you got to win this game, then, if we're talking fair. about it that. It all goes back to the Seahawks. Ooh, is this yeah. what he's going to do? Is you, he going to do what we gotta, think he's going to do? you got to win this game, Chicago, because I'm locking it up. 
against the team of ATL. Yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. Well, not he, lame. They're not, you know, he's he is a, a major part of the podcast, but we decided the team yeah. of ATN. It wasn't just Well, but call. Mark's saying it's okay because he could care less about the Lions and he wants them oh. to lose this game. Yeah. No, I'm and just saying defense he, is bad. So. We're not a, not oh. allowed to lock up against the team of ATL. It, it, it lacks nobility potentially, but not right, from Justin's all. seat. They, they are winless on the road so far, these Lions. Until... I know. I kind of – I don't know if I trust the Bears as a favorite at home. I don't particularly. Well. We got to go quick. All right. Let's Finish go. it, Mark. Let's go. All right. Houston at Giants. Can't wait to see the Giants after their bye week come back and just continue <laughs> to sh- – what? Sorry. No. I can. I love this Giants okay. team. They're my team of ATL. It didn't Sorry, sound convincing. Are. It just – yeah. But no, I like they are. It. But I, I, I want to s- I want to see how they respond. I d- will say, like – I on the Houston side, I know that Davis Mills just the he, whatever he just blends yeah. in <laughs> from our live show in London. Davis Mills just blends in the woodwork, but Damian Pierce, man, I think is another Rookie of the Year candidate. What a moment I probably won't get one from Kenneth Walker, but How about that live show, what a moment that was. That was a lot of fun. What are your thoughts? Just go to the next game. <laughs> hey Dan and Greg, suck on that. <laughs> also from the live show. I Apps. think he was just saying, let, you know, if we, they're going to play the drop and we don't have control of that, you know, let it let it play out. It reminded me of one of my really favorite sorry. memories of this show when we were in that big room. It was a special that was memory. That was great. This past uh, October. Anyway, I'm sorry, Mark. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm you want to keep these short? I've kept it short for you. I, I want to <laughs> see uh, Davis Mills, you know, have two good games in a row. I feel like these two teams are kind of similar. Davis Mills is like the poor man's Daniel Jones right now. It's like Daniel Jones has become this caretaker who doesn't make mistakes and throws the ball short to a well, he's under, awesome on underman the ground, though, group. Too. Yeah, that's where Daniel Jones is better. But Davis Mills can be that kind of guy. And then they both have these dynamic running backs. But again, Saquon's a better version of it because I think he, he's a bigger factor on uh, third down. The, the Giants get a lot of defensive players back, but they also lost Xavier McKinney. ATV, uh, Cabo. They just have been so injured, but they do have a lot of defensive players back. Sounds like a CBS procedural. <laughs> ATV, Cabo. I have, Actually, I do have one take here. This Go is ahead. the first spot where the Giants are supposed to win. You know, the curse of supposed to supposed by to. Uh, Dave Damashek. Mm-hmm. If the Giants win the games they are supposed to, mm-hmm. they are going to make the playoffs. They are playing the Texans. Oh, most definitely. They are playing the Lions. They have two games against the Commanders. Even if you lose one of them, mm-hmm. you're supposed to win them. Mm-hmm. And they have the Colts. All of those games except one of the Commanders games are at home. So the Giants have won these close games. Are they ready to kind of move to the team that, like, wins games they're supposed to? Well, this any 6-2 six, six and 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 team needs to make the playoffs in the NFC. And be... I don't think they're a fake at all. Right, but they have easy games. So right. They, well, so they're, but I don't. But also, I have my doubts. Like if you let's say if it comes down to coaching, the Giants have one of the better coaching staffs in the league by what we've seen so far. They are. A, I do think they're a reg- regression candidate. Also, they have trailed in every game this year. Um, so would it stun me if they play 500 or a tick below? No, but I think because of their six and two record, they might still make the playoffs. Right. Well, the schedule is really what does it for me. I, yeah. That's only. F- there's only nine games left. Five of them are against some of the worst teams in the All league. All right, they're six and two. Do you see them more as like a nine or ten win team, or do you see them more as eleven or twelve? I see them as an eleven win team. That's probably Ooh. more like a ten win, t- ten or nine win team nine. in real life. Nine. So you have them winning three more games all year. Three to four. Nine to ten. Nine to ten wins. I believe in the good feelings. I think they're going to keep doing magical things. It's it's a nice little storyline. Let's move little, on. Final pick. A little storyline. What it's not it's not anything negative I against know. the Giants. I know, but people just I I think like when they win a playoff game, people can be like, oh, now we have to acknowledge they've done something right this season. All right, it's our last one: the Saints and Steelers. Oh, yikes! We made it. Yikes! <laughs> Uh, I don't have a ton of interest in this game. I don't know who does. I mean, yeah. the Saints to me, because I feel like we spent all offseason saying there's a spectrum for the Saints. Low, low ebb or high ebb? High ebb, they're a, they're a sneaky oh, low, like, best team in the, in, in, in the NFC potentially or up there because we were talking about their defense being secondary up there with the Ravens. All that changed when they, you know, they, Gardner Johnson's gone. I hated that move. I think that changed the energy of this team. They're a mess. 
They're an absolute mess. I hated how they got dominated and totally befuddled by the Ravens on Monday night. That was ugly. It was ugly. Like, they just seemed like they didn't know what to do with the Ravens. They're not the first team. That's not going to be a problem with the Steelers. Matt Canada is so Canada that, like, the Steelers, to me, are a tough, tough watch. Like the nation? A little bit. <laughs> That's just what I wrote down to me. Like, there's, there. I had a feeling that was in his notes. I Canada wanted to check is, it. Matt Canada is Canada's so Canada. Beautiful. I've and been, they've always I, been a very, you know, an ally. To I, us I know. In I, you know what? Here we go. Like it, Dan, agreeable I, and likable. Though. I have been Funny. to Canada, and like I've been to Vancouver. Good I spent weeks at Vancouver Island. I've traveled Canada. I actually like Canada. I was just more yeah. saying that Matt Canada does not strike me as like the most high octane and boldened region of the NFL. I, I get it, but he's pretty underwhelming. So that's then putting Canada in a tough spot. Yeah, well, the country. Good, Greg. Greg, the white <laughs> horse for the white knight. I love another, Canada. Another big effort here. Good My for brother, you. Uh, you know, went to school at McGill. Spent a lot of good time in Montreal with him. Uh, what a place! Cal- I like Montreal too. <laughs> Calgary, Alberta, Canada, home <laughs> of the Hart brothers, and their father, Stu Hart. Uh, rest in peace. They, the they, dungeon. What are you? What is going on over there? What are you talking about? If <laughs> Brett, Owen, RIP, the whole gang. If Kenny Pickett is their guy, they need a new coach or they need to figure some things out. And I know he's looked better eye test-wise than the numbers, but the numbers indicate he has the lowest yards for, of compl- per completion of any rookie quarterback, I think, in a long time. So I was thinking he was throwing it deep, but that just it's not true. He, he's not completing balls down the field. They're averaging 11 points per game in his start. I I wouldn't be surprised if they start playing Jalen Warren over Najee Harris, which well, like also genuine reports saying that's is weird. And, yeah, T.J. Watt could return for this game. I, I could see the Steelers winning it just because I, I, I keep struggling with that the Steelers are this bad, and, and this just feels like a spot they could send the sloppy Saints into more misery. Mm. Um, that's, all, a, uh, that's all this game yet. Had a gal pal from Toronto that uh, once uh, wanted to introduce me to her favorite band. It was the Tragically Hip. And uh, she was trying to sell me on the band, and she she knows I'm a sports fan. And she mm-hmm. said, oh, Tragically Hip, an incredible group, and you're going to love it because, like, so many of their songs are about hockey. And I just thought it was, like, the most Canadian thing anyone had ever said to me. And it turns out they are beloved in that country and a very good band. But I think she's looking out for – she's trying to connect with you and look out for your interests. Maybe mm-hmm. she didn't have the total nuance of what sport you followed. It's not a, it's not a band about the New York Yankees uh, or the No, which the would be Jets. interesting. I'd probably listen to that yeah. band, yeah. But it, she's, curious, tr- she's, a, she's a tr- attempting to build That's a connection great, with you. That's some uh, nice. great, you know, music, you know, coming out of Canada. Absolutely. Arcade Fire, they they were McGill students back in the day. I had a friend in Arcade well, Fire. Well, Rufus Wainwright. Absolutely. What a tradition. I mean, Greg, we get it. The Wolf band. parade. Greg, Greg's gonna ride yeah. it on the on the white horse to save I love any, any beleaguered. We get we understand how the. the I like that. That's show. where you're going with this. With that's Canada. exactly where I'll go with it. <laughs> but I love Canada. <laughs> that's exactly where I'll go. Um, great country. All the countries that that feature or include listeners that enjoy this show. I love all of those countries. I love most of them. Um, thank you to everybody. Anything else to add, by the way? And what's been a spicy Thursday show? <laughs> Spicy and long. I'm just saying, have you ever had someone from a Canadian added to the mix that didn't add uh, something pretty nice, something special? Dan Aykroyd. He's great. Michael J. Fox from Canada. Oh, really? He adds a lot. You're always just like, if you meet a Canadian, you're like, oh, yeah, this this person's going to be cool. Rachel Bonetta. There you go. Bonetta! Yes. We are, we are friends with her. Oh, you better... <laughs> Better hope Rachel didn't I mean, hear that I, setup. Like, I think anyone with a brain understands what's happening Like for 98% of this show. Love Rachel Benetta. She's in Germany right now, actually. Yeah, just having a good old time. Check it. Follow all her social for the great stuff that she's got going on. All right. Thank you to everyone for listening. And there he is, the mailman. Heave the call. Oh.